I'm trying out some new technology, so just bear with me. Um, I am streaming in from Zoom and it's all really new to me. So I always talk about making sure you're outside of your comfort zone every single day. For those of you that know me, I am not a technology person. I am 100% outside of my comfort zone, especially because I am, I have Zoom in front of me and then I have Facebook over here just to make sure that it was actually going live. So um, totally out of my comfort zone, which you know I love and try to do every single day. So bear with me and hello, I hope everyone is doing well. I wanted to pop in today and talk to you about an experience, or excuse me, an experiment I did in January. And I did an alcohol-free experiment for the month of January. And I made some notes because I wanted to make sure I covered everything with you. And I know a lot of people do this in January. They do a dry January and then, you know, kind of continue back into whatever their old habits were before. Um, I know some people absolutely have no desire to do a dry January or February or any part of that. And that's okay too. And I know a lot of people don't drink at all. And that's great. So I think, uh, you know, what you really have to do is, hi, Sherlyn, uh, what you really have to do is you have to focus on what works for you. So let me share my experience and tell you what my perspective is. And if you haven't done it already, I welcome you to challenge it, challenge yourself and to do it, because I really think you'll get some really cool insights on yourself and what you can achieve um, and just push yourself. I love to push myself. Um, so a couple of the, the things I wanted to share with you and some feedback I had at the end, right? So it's been a full month and still going a couple days into it or who knows, I have no idea. There's no a def definitive end to this for me, um, but it was easier to do it with someone. So my husband also did a dry January and I was just kind of a spur of the moment. I was like, oh, I'll do it with you. I've never done it. So I'll do it. Why not? Right. So it's challenging myself in a new and a different way, which I am all about. So why not? So I, if you're going to do something like this, I really think that it would be beneficial if you do it with someone just to have accountability. I'm huge on accountability. Having accountability in your day-to-day -day life, especially if you're doing a challenge, it's critical because we were able to talk through things and I was like, oh, you know what, it's been a week. This is what I thought, or it's been, you know, a certain amount of time and this is what I think, or we're going out to dinner, you know, or we cool, or how is this going to be different? So we got to talk through it and really hold each other accountable, which I think made it more fun. Um, and really. I got so much more done and I am, you guys know me, I am a type A personality. I am a driver. I like to get stuff done. I have trouble sitting still. I get ants in my pants and I feel like I always have to do something and I'm working on that as part of my sacred Sundays is to embrace that, but um, I'm really trying to work on that and embrace it. But at the end of the day, I got so much more done because I was... If you think about it, usually if you're having a drink or two or whatever it may be, you're, it's downtime, right? And you're just kind of, you're chilling or relaxing or socializing. So not only that time that you're doing that, but what happens in the hour, two hours, whatever it is after that? So what does your productivity look like after that? Or if you have a couple of drinks at dinner the night before or happy hour, what happens the next morning, right? So it's not just looking at the productivity of the time that, you know, having a, a drink or two would be, but it's also the time afterwards and the time in the next day. So I found that I got a lot more done, uh, which for me is really important. I'm juggling multiple businesses and a family and I'd like to get stuff done. I like to get things checked off my agenda if you don't know by now, I have everything written down, agenda, 30 minute increments every single day. So if it's not scheduled, it doesn't happen. Um, and then, so my days overall were just better. 
because I was clear headed. I was really focused, really energized, and I didn't feel like I quote unquote wasted any time. Right. And don't don't get me wrong. Socializing and spending downtime is not wasting time. But again, it's not only looking at that time, but what happens after as well. Um, and then also, it was really interesting to to be introspective and to think, right? So Friday nights we have in our family, we do Friday night game nights and we make homemade pizza. And typically I'll have a drink while I do that. And it's one, it's not a big deal, but it's a trigger, right? So that happens and I go to get a drink and I notice that. A couple of times it's been beautiful. I'm in Florida. It's been beautiful weather. It's been a little chilly. We have a fire pit. So we've sat outside some. We like to grill. And I found that during those times, those are times when it would actually cross my mind. I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'd like to have a drink. And I didn't because it was part of this challenge and this experiment. But it was interesting for me to recognize a trigger and to recognize when in my mind, I, I correlated what I was doing with alcohol, right? So if you take that and you, you take it away from my dry January experiment, experiment, excuse me, and you just look at it from a trigger standpoint or a habit standpoint, what, what are your habits? What are your triggers? You know, are you after dinner? Do you always have to have a dessert? Do you wake up in the morning and you always work out? What are your triggers and what are your habits? Are they positive habits? Are they serving you and your life, your business, your family, or are they negative habits? So things that trigger a negative response. And if they are, what can you replace those with? So for me, this wasn't just about the, the alcohol experiment, right? Dry January. For me, it was really looking at habits and triggers in my day, in my week, whatever it is throughout my month and figuring out what those triggers are and whether it triggers a positive or a negative response or habit to it and how I can tweak those and change things to better serve me. So I don't know, you know, at this point I'm recording this, it's February 4th. I don't know, am I going to go another month? I don't know, a week, a couple days, I don't know, five hours. I have no earthly idea. For me, it was an experiment. I wanted to see what the results were. I wanted to see my thoughts after the month. And I really like to challenge myself in new and different ways. So I encourage you, challenge yourself in a new and different way. Put yourself in a challenge experiment, get out of your comfort zone, record something in Zoom and stream it into Facebook Live when you've never done it before. Do whatever it is, stretch and grow. This is 2021. We are, it's going to be a much better year than it was last year. And I encourage you to stretch and to grow and become the woman that you deserve to be. I hope this video found you well. Cheers to your success and happiness. I will see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Now I got to figure out how to turn this off.